One of the two most popular techniques for climbing a rope is the S-Wrap. And while it isn't as fast or efficient as the J-Hook, it's definitely more secure. So if you're just a casual runner looking to complete the rope climb, this is probably the technique for you. The rope climb can be broken down into three simple steps, lift, lock, and stand. This video is going to show you how to practice each of these movements individually and then put them all together, rather than trying to jump up on the rope and do them all at the same time. You want the rope centered to your body rather than off to the side, so whichever leg you use, you want to start the rope on the inside of the thigh. I'm going to kick past the rope so it's on the inside of the leg. Bring the foot around the front, spiral down. So my foot's out in front, toes flex, ropes over the knot of the shoelace. If you do it right, it starts on the inside of the thigh and ends on the inside of the foot. Now, you wanna lift your leg as high as you can, so don't be afraid to lean back. If you're holding onto the rope, you're not gonna go anywhere, and more height means less moves. Now this is where people have problems with the S-Wrap. You see this loop right here? If you don't get rid of that, your feet are gonna keep locking in the same position and you're not gonna go anywhere. So, whether you do one big kick or 50 small kicks, you need to get the rope flush with your leg so more's hanging off your foot. That's how you're gonna progress up the rope. As you can see, there's a lot going on here, but fortunately you can practice this without leaving the ground. And I suggest you do, because you can do it a hundred times down here and not wear out those hands. Plus, if you make a little mistake or you get lost or whatever happens, you don't want to worry about fixing it when you're halfway up the rope. The best way to practice the lock is sitting on a box. So, uh, if you need to, if the box is in the way, go ahead and get into your lift standing and then sit down into it. Now, when you raise up and we got our rope exactly where we want over the knot of the shoelace, we're going to bring the other foot over. You want your toes crossed and you want to stack the knots of your shoelaces. You can also think about it like you're taking the curve of your top foot and wrapping it around the shin of your bottom leg. So we're gonna bring the knees close together, cross the toes across each other, so they're not parallel, they're crossed over, and the knots of the shoelaces are stacked on top of each other. That's where you can push down and you can feel that tension, okay? If you're off to the side or you're trying to hold on with your toe or anything like that, it's not going to feel as strong. It's not going to be as strong. So stack the knots of the shoelaces. The only exception is I've seen some people who lead in with the heel. So they turn the knee out, lead in with the heel like this. Totally fine. It's a very strong lock. Uh, you just want to make sure that you still have the rope over the knots of the bottom shoe and that the rope is laying right over that knot. So when you're pushing through with the heel, you want to be pushing close to the ankle joint, not out over the toes. If your lock is strong, you should be able to stand right up off the rope. So you're going to get into your position, locking that rope in. Now, lean back. You want your arms nice and relaxed, pulling back, not down. You want a space between you and the rope. Flexed feet, no pointed toes. So when you stand up, you're going to push down and away through the heels. Just stand up with the legs, walking up with your hands. Your final position should be nice locked knee, locked hip, leaning away, nice space between you and the rope. And if you feel like you've got a strong lock, you should be able to let go with one hand, should be able to let go with two hands. Now, whether it's three times or 30, 
Climbing is just repeating these steps over and over till you get to the top. And if you do them correctly, it's like 95% lower body and 5% upper body. Remember, the higher you can lift means less moves on the rope. The faster you can unlock and relock those feet means less time hanging on with your hands. And of course, standing up nice and straight, locking out, squeezing those feet puts all the work in the legs. And which can you do longer, stand or hang? Hopefully you're watching this before you climbed up too high. And if not, I hope you made it down okay. You probably have a little bit of rope burn on your leg though, don't you? This is because you didn't unlock enough and you kept the rope tight around your leg. Now, pants and long socks will help with that, but this is the technique to come down pain-free. First, you're gonna keep your feet locked and walk the hands down to where you're in the deepest squat you can get. Then you're going to completely unlock the feet and extend the leg that's wrapped. Then relock. The rope has more slack. There's not that tension that's being held by the other foot and it slides easier preventing those burns. It's not a quick method, but like I said before, the S-wrap is just about completing the rope. It may take some time and practice, but if you really feel like you're just not understanding the S-wrap, try the J-hook. Sometimes we just understand one better than the other. I'll leave a link down below to my video on that. Also, a video on training the movements when you don't even have access to a rope. So be sure to check those out. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Till then, keep practicing. I'll see you on the course.